record. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Um, so today we're talking about the second Sunday of the Blessed Month of Hattor. And with this month, we're, we're focusing on the theme of the Word of God. And if you remember in the liturgy, there's a part that we pray. We say, bless the seeds, the herbs, the plants, the field. Um, and so the church is reminding us of the parable of the sower in the first two Sundays. Um, so this is the second Sunday. Last week, we read from Luke chapter 8, and today we're reading from uh, Matthew chapter 13. So if you were unable to read it, it's, it's Matthew chapter 13 that we read the parable of the sower. And so the church readings in the calendar is around sowing and harvesting. And the theme of Hattor, again, is uh, the Holy Bible and the work of the Bible in our lives. And our Lord Jesus Christ describes uh, four different responses to preaching about his kingdom. And then and, and he explains those, and especially in Luke chapter 8, in verses 9 through 15, he explains the meanings of, of the parable, which is really nice. This is what we contemplated from last week. And so as a quick summary, um, some of the seed in the parable, uh, some of the seed that is sown didn't even have a chance to sprout. The birds came down and swooped up and, and they picked up the seed. And according to our Lord Jesus Christ and his explanation, uh, the devil is taking the word out of our hearts. And, and then while some of the seed sprouts, there's no moisture and the ground is shallow and the heat of the day, when temptation comes, the little plant shrivels up and dies and there's no fruit. And some of the seed, when it sprouts, it grows, but then it becomes choked up by the weeds and it dies and there's no fruit. And only some of the seed gets good soil and some of the seed grows crop and, and bears fruit. And so we'll, we'll take a look at each one, or we'll take a look specifically at the rocky ground today. Um, who is the sower? It's none other than our Lord Jesus Christ. The sower went out. And when we say he went out, we're talking about the incarnation. So this going out is the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, to the world. The seed is the word of God that he spoke. So the sower went out. Christ and it was incarnate and he became man to give us his word so that we can bear fruit. So we have the same sower, we have the same seed. And sometimes the sower is in different forms. We have the same sower, it's Christ. And sometimes we see that sower um, in the lives of the apostles and the prophets with the Holy Spirit working within them. So we have the same sower, we have the same seed, the same word of God that contains life itself. What's different? The difference is the type of ground. And that depends on us. Sometimes people think that the parable of the sower is just for people that are outside the church. But that's not true. It, it's us. So the reaction depends on us. That's why he said at the end of the parable, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. And the story, um, everyone receives the seed. Nobody is um, not able and, and taken away from the seed. Everybody has a chance. It's just different reactions based on the person. And so today I want to focus on on the rocky ground. And so when we think about plants, when we think about harvesting and all these kind of things, we're thinking about the root system. And we know that roots are very important. And the roots that we need to have, uh, according to our Lord Jesus Christ, is the root that's grown from the seed of the word of God. Why? Because without the root, the plant or tree cannot grow. And if it can't grow, it can't produce fruit. In our world today, we need good fruit. But not just for physical nourishment, but more importantly for physical for spiritual for spiritual nourishment. With good deep roots, we can produce the following. Saint Paul says in Galatians chapter five, "But the fruit of the spirit is love and joy and peace and long suffering and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self control. Against such there is no law." But on the flip side, we have to be careful. Our Lord gives us a clear warning if we're not bearing fruit. And it's very serious. Our Lord said it specifically. He said, now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing but leaves and said to it, let no fruit grow on you ever again. And immediately the fig tree withered away. It's a scary consequence of not bearing fruit. The fig tree likely did not have good roots. It withered because it had no roots. So if we have no roots in Christ, we won't bear fruit. So if a tree does not have fruit, it will be known by this type. Our Lord said in Matthew chapter 7, he said, even so, every good tree bears good fruit, 
but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. So we are known by the fruits that we bear. Good fruit can grow only in our lives if we are rooted in Christ and his church through faith and prayer and Holy Communion. And again, our Lord Jesus Christ was very specific on the subject. If you read from John chapter 15, uh, verses 1 through 8, <clears throat> he says, this is a, a familiar ver, uh, passage for us. He says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bring forth more fruit. You already be clean through the word I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch, as is withered. And they, and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they're burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done to you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you uh, will be my disciples. Oftentimes <clears throat> we hear from people, what does it matter what I believe as long as we just do the right thing? If we have good morals in life. To this, we say it matters very much what we believe because belief rises from, sorry, action rises from our belief. Belief is the root of action. So in our Lord Jesus Christ, we see new life and that new life requires a whole new root system. And that life begins in baptism. The old infected root system of Adam is replaced by an entirely new one. The disease infested roots of our sinful nature is cut off by God's grace. And we're given a new, a clean, disease-free, sin-free nature implanted within us. And so let's take a look at how this is applied to the rocky ground. Regarding the rocky ground, our Lord explains that the seed soon sprang up but withered away because it had no moisture. And Christ explains that these types of grounds represents the human, the person who hears the word, but because of different dispositions of their heart and soul, they have a different reaction. Let's see what our Lord specifically said about the rocky ground. He says, but the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, who believe for a while and in time of temptation fall away. It's in time of temptation when the devil tempts us to think or to do something against God's commandments. There are different um, accounts of temptations that are given to us in the scripture. And I think the most prominent ones maybe are the temptation of uh, Adam and Eve in the garden and the temptation of our Lord in the wilderness after he was baptized. Satan, the devil, he's involved in all these types of temptations. And he's even involved in our lives today with our temptations today. Being baptized, <clears throat> being chrismated, being a Christian, being a follower of Christ is no guarantee and no protection against temptation. The temptation will come. The sun will come. We will all be tempted. And I would say we're nearly tempted all the time. So the question becomes then, if we're tempted all the time, if we have this onslaught all the time, how is it that we just don't just fall away all the time? In the parable, every type of person hears the word of God. And these people represent, represented by the rocky ground even receive the word of God with joy, happily. However, he says that the people with a stony heart have no root. So we can conclude that just reading the scripture and hearing the divine liturgy is not enough. Even if we're eager and we're happy to listen to it, there has to be something more required. So it's the part that we can't see. The most important in part of the Christian life is the part that we can't see. It's the root system. 
This is what enables us to draw on the deep resources of God that help us fight against the evil pressures that are against us in our lives. It may be years before we realize how deep our spiritual roots have grown as a result of strong winds. And maybe we have dry periods in our lives. But this is for pruning. This is, for, this is to help us build our deeper spiritual root system. Pruning sometimes feels like a punishment. But sometimes we have to remember that the trials of life are given to us by God to make us stronger, not weaker. And the same is true for the roots. Trees that are exposed to strong winds are forced to sink their roots deep into the earth so that they can be able to resist the winds. Sometimes God uses the storms and the challenges in our life to strengthen our spiritual root system. We have to have this understanding. Some, when, when plants are deprived of water, sometimes the roots are forced to grow even deeper to search for moisture. The whole plant is thus made stronger and able to resist a more serious drought later on. And so the word of God must take root in our hearts. So those roots must grow ever deeply in our lives. It's a continuous journey. So what does this involve? If we think of a garden outside and we think of our backyards and things like that, if we're, if we're blessed to have a garden, the difference between fall and spring, the difference between no roots and deep roots, we're basically talking about three different things. We're talking about time, we're talking about water, and we're talking about rest. So first, we have to take one each, each one and examine each one. First, we know that roots don't grow overnight. It takes days, it takes weeks, it takes even months for plants to grow good roots. And it takes time. And our spiritual maturation in Christ also takes time. When we're baptized as infants, we don't instantly become saintly little Christians, right? Even if we convert uh, to Christ later on in life as adults, we don't become uh, physic we don't become uh, perfect and sinless instantly. No, human beings have the longest maturation period and both physically and mentally of any living thing in the world. The same is true of our soul. It takes a long time to mature. It takes a long time to be faithful. It, it takes a long time to be a dedicated follower of Christ. So don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged in our world of instant everything that, you know, I, at this time of my life, I should be. I, I should be changing faster. I should be at a different place in my life. We have to be careful of, of, of fighting that temptation. We're not, uh, that we don't get discouraged that we're not changing as fast as we think we should. And more importantly, just because it doesn't happen quickly, we don't stop trying to grow in our faith in Christ. Because of our, of our maturation is steady and slow, we have to expose ourselves daily to the word of God. We have to read the scripture uh, constantly, weekly. We have, to, we have to be engaged with the liturgy as much as possible. I know some of the fathers believe that it's, it's, it's better to read one chapter from the Bible each day than to read you know, the whole book in one day and then not read it for the subsequent days, right? It's just like watering the plants outside. It's better to water the grass 10 minutes a day, every day if possible, versus watering it one time for a couple of hours on Sunday, right? That doesn't work. That doesn't work with plants. It doesn't work with us. So a little bit each day will help us grow our deeper roots. So we have to understand the difference. Second thing we have to think about is what the roots need water to grow. And we humans and our souls need water too. What is our spiritual water? It's the Holy Spirit. And so remember what our Lord Jesus Christ said to the Samaritan woman at Jacob's well in John chapter four. And the Holy Spirit comes to us primarily through prayer. When, when we water our grass, again, we don't water it for eight hours on Sunday and then neglect the rest of the week. No, we do a little bit each day. Same is true for prayer. A little bit each day is better than a lot once a week. Even if it's just for a few minutes, even if it's our Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy upon me, a sinner. 
that's more powerful than neglecting for a few days. So just a few minutes of scripture, a few minutes a day of prayer. Um, if we have the icons at home and we have our home altar, and hopefully this quarantine and this whole pandemic has taught us the importance of the home altar. And if we stand in front of our home altar and we see the icon of Christ, and we just, if we just pause for a moment and just reflect on Christ and reflect on the cross, that is a deep prayer. Sometimes our prayer doesn't have to have words, but we just open our hearts and we open our minds uh, and, and we let the Holy Spirit dwell within us. And then we think of uh, in the root system that roots need rest. Roots need rest in order to grow. This is why if we're in the springtime and we're planting a new garden, we, we tape off that area so it's not to be disturbed, right? Just like our plants need undisturbed rest to grow, the same is true for our souls. We may come to divine liturgy and be inspired by the hymns and the sermon and a person who greets us and we go home with joy and we're thinking that joy will sustain us and we neglectfully fail to attend church for weeks and months after that. But time away from, from worship of God and time away from receiving the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, time away from our fellow Christians is, is, is like being separated from soil. Is like the plant being separated from the soil. It's, it's the very person, the, the body, the mind, the soul, the heart being separated and peeled away from God himself. So we have to be careful. We have to have rest. We have to be able to um, allow our root systems to grow. So to conclude, it's easy for us to believe that this parable is for those people who are outside the church. <clears throat> and those four different soils are for people that are outside the church. It doesn't pertain to, like the good soil is just for us. But everything else, the getting choked and not having the deep roots, that's for people outside the church. No, the people outside the church is a whole different kind of soil altogether. For those that are not in the church, those who are not hearing the preaching of the word of God, they're not getting any seed thrown at them at all. So if you show up, if you listen to the sermons, if you hear the preaching of our Lord Jesus Christ, that gives you the opportunity to be one of the four soils. So we pray that we choose to be the right kind of soil. Let us not just be here only in body, but here in mind and spirit. And let us hang on to every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Let us hear the word of God and let it sprout in our hearts. And let us send it to have deep roots, not to be shallow. And let us not allow the cares of this world to choke our seed and to choke our plants. But let us protect it, um, what's growing. So let us be the fertile foil, the soil that we may be fruitful in the kingdom of God. And in a similar way, we have to resist the small temptations in order to be ready for the big temptations. And growth only comes through a sincere repentance and, and the sacramental confession and really being um, the participation of the tears that come from uh, that confession, acknowledging your sin and the connection with the Eucharist. Being connected to Christ is important because in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 and 8, our Lord says, uh, God says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its root by the river and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. So let us take time to be with God. This new lockdown time in December allows us to slow down a little bit more. Let us be patient with him and let's be patient with ourselves to let the root of God dwell deeply within us so that it can grow in our hearts. This comes through prayer. This comes through rest. This comes through undisturbed rest, making sure that we're staying in constant contact with the good soil of the church so that we let our roots grow deeper into the community and as our roots grow deeper let us root out every sinful and deadly passion from our hearts so that we can cultivate good soil and glory be to god forever amen <clears throat>